We are finally here, at this exciting point, exploring control plane functional routing. We mentioned the network layer consists of two main functionalities, routing and forwarding. Routing, which has a network-wide logic, happens in the control plane. It determines the route taken by packets from the source to the destination. Forwarding, which moves packets from input to the appropriate output at each device or router along the path, happens in data plane. We discuss forwarding as it happens in traditional destination-based forwarding, as well as generalized forwarding in software-defined networking. We now want to discuss routing. First, starting with traditional routing. First, what is routing? The process of determining systematically how to forward messages towards the destination node based on its address is called routing. A router is a device that is connected to two or more networks and delivers this functionality. Traditional routing is performed per router. Software-defined networking performs routing in a logically centralized controller. In traditional routing, we can either have a static routing defining the routes that do not change in each router or run algorithms that define them dynamically. Routing algorithms could be classified to two main categories of distance vector or link state. We will first explore traditional routing, and we start by learning routing algorithms. Then we check how we use those algorithms in routing protocols and learn additional concepts like policies that are used in definition of routing protocols. The goal of a routing protocol is determining the best path from the sending host to the receiving host. The sequence of routers that the packet traverses while going from the source to the destination host is called a path. We want this path to be fast, inexpensive, and least congested. In other words, shortest path that has the lowest link costs and not very busy. This is not a trivial problem. We use a graph abstraction to formulate our problem. A graph has a set of n nodes and e links that connect the nodes. Nodes represent the routers in the network. Links, depicted by a tuple consisting of two nodes, show the links connecting those two nodes. Note that graph abstraction with different definitions of n and e can be used in many other contexts. Even in the networking, it could be used for abstraction of other networks, such as peer-to-peer -peer networks, where N is the set of peers and E is the set of TCP connections. In this model, the cost of a link, for example, cost of a link from node X to node X prime is depicted by C of X and X prime, which equals a number. For example, in the shown graph, C of W and Z equals 5. This cost could be a constant value or inversely related to bandwidth or congestion or directly related to actual monetary cost of using a link. If an edge is not available, this cost could be set to infinity. Cost of a path is sum of the costs of the links along that path. With this abstraction, the question of routing can be formulated as the least cost path between two given nodes. A routing algorithm is the algorithm that finds that least cost path. 